This week on Zooborns Australia, the zoo welcomes a new group of numbat joeys who are being carefully studied before returning to the wild. The best part is being able to see them being released back into the wild. Perth Zoo's native species breeding program is celebrating its newest success, the birth of 18 numbat joeys. Perth Zoo is the only place in the world that breeds numbats, and to date we have managed to breed 244 young that have been successfully released back into the wild. Numbats, or banded anteaters, are one of the most unique and endangered species in Australia. Unlike other marsupials, numbat mothers do not carry their joeys in a pouch. Instead, the joeys attach to their mother's teats and she carries them against her chest for up to five months. Once the numbat joeys have become too heavy for their mother to carry, she deposits them into underground nests to protect them from predators. Weaning her young from breast milk is one of the most precarious times in a female numbat's life, with potentially fatal consequences. We do need to keep very close tabs on mastitis in the mother. Occasionally the mammary glands will become engorged at the time of weaning where there's too much milk produced and the mother will then get um, a temperature and a fever and an infection. And it's not dissimilar to what happens to humans as well. So we do need to monitor that very carefully because it can cause death in numbats. For numbat joeys, this weaning process is the first time they are introduced to termites, the main ingredient in their diets. This year we have bred successfully 18 babies and they're at that point where they're just in the process of weaning away from mum and we're trying to wean them onto the artificial diet and or termites because they will be released back into the wild. Numbats consume up to 20,000 termites a day, so to keep up with the demand, the Perth Zoo has begun harvesting termites and creating their own special termite custard. So this is the custard that was cooked um, the day before. Two types of, uh, two species of termite that we use. Um, we've got coptotermes, which we have pretty much year round. And then nasuti termes, this is a more winter active termite. So 75. And whiskey is a great fan of nasuti termes. Some animals are a little bit more selective. And then we mix them. Six months later, 10 of the numbat joeys are being prepared to be released into the wild at the Mount Gibson Sanctuary. In a collaboration with the Australian Wildlife Conservancy and Parks and Wildlife, today's release will mark the 200th numbat return to the wild. This is the second time that we've taken the animals from Perth Zoo out to Mount Gibson, so we're really looking forward to seeing how they go and we're, we're really sure that they're going to take off well. The ones from last year settled in quite nicely and we know that numbats are now breeding at Mount Gibson, so we're well on our way to establishing a very self-sustaining, viable population back in a semi-arid environment in Australia and that's, that's really exciting for us. The 10 numbats released today are not only helping advance scientific research, 
but saving this iconic Australian species from extinction. It is a wonderful um, period because we've watched these babies from January when they've been born and we've been there right through to the end of the year for that whole journey for 12 months and the best part is being able to see them being released back into the wild and as a team that's one of the, the highlights of working here at the zoos. Love what you see with baby numbats? Vote for your favorite zoo born of the season and we'll donate 3,000 US dollars towards conservation efforts for the winning species. Next week on Zooborns Australia, two baby African caped porcupines are born whose tiny quills are sharp enough for zookeepers to use shields. <laughs>